Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a differential equation with pi and i. We have an imaginary number and an irrational number, a transcendental number, all together in the same equation. Now, this is probably considered an easy differential equation, even though the result will be pretty interesting. And I'll be presenting two methods even though the methods might be somewhat similar because we're solving the same differential equation, right? So we have dy over dx equals i pi y. And we're going to be solving for y values or find y in terms of x. So I'm going to go ahead and write, write this uh, with the variable separated because this is a separable differential equation. Let's go ahead and divide by y that gives us dy over y and then bring the dx on the right hand side that's going to be i pi dx once you separate the variables you can go ahead and integrate both sides with respect to each variable that will be fairly easy most of the time now the integral of uh, 1 over y dy is just ln and in this case you may or may not use the absolute value I usually skip that but Obviously, you need to make sure that if you're not using absolute value, y needs to be positive, so on and so forth. On the right-hand side, how do you integrate i pi? i and pi are constants, and their product is also a constant. So you basically can take it out. So you can write it as i pi, and then the integral of dx with respect to, I mean, just integral of 1 dx. You can think of it that way. And what is the... What is the integral of or antiderivative of 1? Like think about it this way. The derivative of what function equals 1? And the answer is x. But we also have these constants, so it's just going to be i pi x. Should there be a constant? Absolutely. So we should go ahead and include our constant c. Great. So we're almost there. Let's go ahead and solve for y if possible, right? In some equations sometimes you solve a differential equation x and y are so mixed together kind of like intermingled that you can't really extract y out of the equation but in this case it's easy let's go ahead and do e to the power both sides that gives us something like this and as you know this can be separated and e to the say is a e to the say e to the c is a constant because c is a constant so i can kind of call that k and now e to the ln y is just going to be y and from here we're going to get y equals k times e to the power i pi x actually if you rip, if you use a um, r instead of k that would be a little bit more meaningful i think let's go ahead and use r and r will represent what the modulus or the absolute value of our complex number why because if you think about it e to the power i pi x using euler's formula can be written differently and what is euler's formula e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta so e to the power i pi x from here can be written as follows we can take the r out and then write this as cosine of pi x or x pi plus i sine of pi x. So depending on the x value, obviously, you can get numerical values. For example, if x is equal to 0, then cosine 0 is 1, and you're going to get r. If x is 1 half, you're going to get cosine pi over 2, so on and so forth. Get the idea? You're going to get some special angles if x is a good number. But anyways, the answer solution is a complex number. R is the modulus and pi x would be the argument because theta is the argument. Okay. And this would be the modulus and the solution would be a complex number. Since no initial conditions were given, we're not able to figure out the value of C or R. So we're going to have to leave it at that. But let's go ahead and take a look at an alternative solution method. Okay. Great. So let's get the original problem. So we have dy over dx equals i pi.
pi y. You see why we have this i in the equation? That just gives us a complex number at the end. So let's go ahead and approach this problem slightly differently and see if we can get the same thing. Now I want to write dy over dx as y prime. And there's a good reason behind that. I'm not going to separate the variables. L, well, actually, sort of, yeah, I'm not going to. But I will, I'd like to bring the y over here to the left-hand side. And I want to write this quotient, y prime over y equals i pi. Now think about it for a minute, for a second maybe. I don't know. Why did I do this, right? Because I'll, I'll talk about it. There's a good reason behind this. Pause the video if you don't want to hear the reasoning. But the reason why I did this is because I know that y prime over y is the derivative of something. Okay, if you are solving differential equations, you need to know the rules of differentiation. If you're integrating, which is sometimes you do even for solving differential equations, you need to know the rules of differentiation. So that's the very first thing you need to know. And if you did not know that, then you would know that ln y, when differentiated, becomes y prime over y. So the left-hand side is the derivative of ln y. And the right-hand side is just a constant, right? Okay, how do we get rid of the derivative? By integrating again, same idea, with a different twist, right? Because we have ln y now. Instead of last time we were integrating, was it ln as well? No, we were integrating 1 over y, but this time we have something slightly different, isn't, isn't it? So, if you integrate both sides, you get ln y equals, and remember, you're integrating with respect to y, so it's going to be i pi y. Hmm, that's interesting. Didn't we just say y prime is i pi y? That was the original, now this turned into ln y equals i pi y. Because we are going to, actually, uh, I think y is a function of x exactly. So we should do integration with respect to x. And this should be i pi x. I'm sorry. Apologize. It should be I, not i pi y, i pi x. And then we're going to be doing the e to the power of both sides. And y from here is just going to be e to the power i pi x. Wait a minute. What happened to the constant? Well, I forgot to include it. So if you include it here... It is going to be, actually, that should be a C, and then we're going to turn it into an R. And that will be times E to the C, which we designated as R. And then from here, Y is going to be the same way, R times E to the power I pi X, which you can also write as R times cosine pi X plus I sine pi X. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.